Hello again, welcome to another episode of Azania in Therapy. I'm your host, Taban Tlaka. Today, we've got a special edition. I'm talking to a co-author. We've written this book uh, with 30 other people and uh, we're going to unpack and enjoy, um, you know, what she wrote about. Um, she's an attorney, a mother of three, believes that life is about balance. Um, we're going to be talking about childhood trauma. Please welcome uh, my guest, Miriam Chewu. How are you? I'm good at you, uh, Tawang. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy that uh, you are here, you know. Um, you and a couple of authors and myself have come together and put together this book. And I must say, you know, I, I, I just enjoy how it came about. I don't know how you feel about the entire project. Yeah, look, um, yeah, thank you for, for having me. Um, it, it's an interesting project. Yeah. Um, I actually still sometimes feel it's a real the way it just worked out. Yeah. Out of it, I, I did learn the true meaning of unity is mm. power. Mm. Um, one would have thought so many people coming together, yeah. to, you know, sometimes it just can drag and drag, but this thing materialized in such a short space of time, mm. hardly any hiccups, so a very lovely project, but mm. most importantly, the book itself yeah. and what it represents that's that's that for me it's 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 a wow it's yeah no it's wonderful i i, I actually also am, i'm taken aback by how you know dr petla has this vision she contacts um, mm -hmm. all of us and we talk and i think she also probably you know sifted uh sort of I think we're all very professional. Yeah. I mean, I think we must write a book about how the story came together. <laughs> That's an interesting book that will come yeah. about. Now, um, so you are asked to contribute a chapter in the book. Yeah. And you decide to write about childhood trauma. Yeah. Out of all the things you could have picked. Yeah. Why that? Yeah, it, it's actually the first thing that just <laughs> popped in your mind. Yes. How come? And How come? Yeah, I think it's because um, uh, lately I had been doing a lot of thinking mm -hmm. around it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, sometimes as a person, you need to just reflect yeah. <laughs> on it's your sometimes, life. It's sometimes, sometimes. Yes, yeah, so you look at um, the, your, the developments in your life mm -hmm. and you sit back and you reflect. And for me, it always went back to that, the childhood trauma. Yeah. And yeah, so I had always... Um, thought it's something that I would want to write about but also just do a little bit more investigation about yeah. it as well you yeah. know um, yeah I mean so what questions did you have about childhood traumas you were reflecting and you know thinking about what was you know going yeah. around in your mind you know <laughs> yeah okay so you know, you've already said I'm an, I'm an attorney, yeah. so people look at me, uh, uh, I'm probably a role model to yeah. some. You say attorneys, they are uh, making money. You know, <laughs> some people look at me and think, you know, she's got it all figured yeah. out, yeah. you know, ma'am and whatever. Yeah. But there is just one area in my life that even I know that, yeah. uh, you know, I don't have it all together. Yeah. You know, sometimes I sit and think, I wonder, you know, what people... Uh, thinking or you know how come this area and that area for me uh, I mean the childhood trauma could have an impact on all sorts of other areas but yes. I decided to zoom into this one that has to do with relationships and in particular romantic relationships ah, yeah. hey, it's one of those topics eh? <laughs> Yeah. And why romantic relationships? Because I come from two failed marriages. Yeah. yeah. So then, you know, naturally you have to sit back and say why. Mm. You know why. And yeah, and I would sit back and I would say, you know, two failed marriages. Do I regret, um, you know, that any of the marriages mm. failed? Would I still want to be in any of those marriages? Then, mm. you know, the answer is a no. Mm. And then you're like, okay. Are you an unstable person mm. generally? What's yeah. wrong with you? Mm. You know, like why would um, no? But I think I am, and I think the reason why I keep going back and getting married is because I do want stability. Mm. So then, why? Mm. Why? 
um, yeah, then, then, then as I look into it, I, I go back yeah. and say, in the first place, how do these marriages start? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that's where I start seeing that. Okay, mm. I think that is where my challenge is. Yeah. Um, uh, my challenge is is that um, so because of the the trauma that one experienced mm. as a child, um, issues of abandonment. Mm. So they you grow with those, yeah. right? And uh, to a point where. Um, at some point, I would ask myself, do I even believe in love? Like, yeah. do, do I believe that love exists? Yeah. Or is there such a is thing? Is there such a thing? Mm. Or, you know, Tabang comes to me because mm. I have something that I can offer Tabang. Resources, and then materials. then I say yes to Tabang mm. because I also can, you know. Mm. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so, yeah, it, 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 it just goes back there. And then I realized that... Yeah, because you don't really believe. Yeah. It's not about love mm. for, for you. It's about what do you want and what can we give each other and whatever. And the fact that people leave your leave. Mm. In your life, people will leave. Yeah, people so, come and they go. Yeah, as much as other people believe that marriage is forever. And as much as I, I think even with me, I would want it to be, but there is no forever. Mm. Uh, the, for me, personally, there yeah. has never been a forever. People just left some intentionally mm. some through death yeah. some just people just leave so um it's like okay for now tab tabang makes me happy so it's okay yeah. i'll say yes yeah to tabang saying let's get married yeah. because if it doesn't work out well i can go tabang can <laughs> yeah go. that's yeah. how life works <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's how it works <laughs> that's how it works yes so yeah so so those are the things that i then discovered that my biggest problem starts with right at the beginning i have had people say that i cannot get married to this person because they lacking that mm. they lacking that i need to make sure mm. and i realize that i do not have that mm. as long as you there you give me attention at that particular time yeah we're doing it because yeah. you know like i say if it doesn't work down the line then we call it quits yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you saying some very interesting things for me, uh, but it makes sense because I mean, um, what 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 part of what you are touching on, right? Is that um, when I work with people, I realize um, many of us underestimate the impact that childhood has on us, right? And um, so then you, you touch on, you know, how you reflected. You, you, so you've been in these kind of marriages and then you are reflecting. But something led you to to think about, you know, childhood trauma. Um, but then again, there's another thing you are saying, which, which has to do with the, the idea of forever, mm. right? Um, I don't know. So maybe let's put it this way. Um, I don't know if you know that... I don't know if you're aware of uh, attachment styles. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, to explain it simply is that um, human beings, so when we are born, there's, uh, we, learn, um, a, we learn how to connect with others. We receive some sort of blueprint. Mm. And that has to do with uh, your primary caregivers. Mm. And so, if you are born, it depends how you were actually nursed, whether you were breastfed, how they breastfed you, when you cried, whether they picked you up, they didn't pick you up. And, and the long and short of it is that when that is happening, you are busy being programmed to you have a, a blueprint of how relationships is being formed. So if you were neglected or if you cried and nobody picked you up or they left you, mm -hmm. something in the mind says, um, when I'm in distress, nobody will come to my rescue. And therefore, this is the script that I have. Mm. And because this is the script that I have, this is the script I will play out, right? Um, you will see it with, um, uh, very often we say with orphans. They will say, I don't, I don't believe that you love me. Mm. You're going to leave. One day you leave me. Mm -hmm. And uh, why? Because my mom and dad left. Mm. So I don't, I don't understand why some stranger will come and love me. Yeah. And so, so then once they, there's that sort of script that we received as children, mm -hmm. if we've never reflected on it enough, it tends to 
play out and so somebody is in your life but you subconsciously also send them that message mm. or oh, it's the way we carry out you know and so mm. stuff like that uh, plays out so when you when you say that it, it like you know it, it makes me um you know c- curious about actually why you linked it to to childhood stuff why mm. you didn't think nah maybe it's because you know how men are like this and mm. societies like that yeah. and but your so you went through something you reflect on it you say but hang on i think childhood has something to do with this mm. how did you get to that realization yeah um look um maybe it is because yeah. uh, one of the traumas has to do with my mom leaving me when I was just 10 months old. Yes. I think I have, I have always kind of believed that it has yeah. uh, to have had some kind of an impact. And when you are unpacking it now, mm. you are actually touching on, because in my chapter, yeah. I actually said that I'm going to leave that to the experts. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting for me to hear what the experts say because someone can say you were 10, you were no, not yet away. Yeah. But then I've always sat down and thought, okay, but this is the person I was, re- I bonded with. Yes, them yes. From when I was in, in, in the womb. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Then I come out. Those 10 months, that is the person that I knew. Yes, I wasn't talking, but I think the most communication was between them, me and her. Mm. We understood how we communicated, yeah. right? Yeah. Then one day, they are not there. Mm. You are only 10, you can't ask, mm. right? Yeah. You say, day goes by, mm. another day, you keep thinking, maybe they will come back. Mm. Or, or somebody maybe even tries to explain it to you because yeah. you know the elder sometimes will come to you maybe and say look your mom has left mm. I'm 10 can I hear them mm. so I'm saying in my chapter that it would be interesting to know what that does because I believe it does a lot it, it's probably even worse than when you are slightly older and someone can explain yeah. and you understand it you know so this thing of me not uh, just to answer your question why I, I, I thought I, I would take it back to childhood trauma is that I've just always wondered why I don't believe in love. But the funny thing is that I believe I can love you. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't trust that. I just that. don't trust that <laughs> another person. Yeah. And yeah, so, so yeah, so as I reflect on it, I said it can only be that. But complete yes. the thought you said, so you, you believe that, you know, you could be, you could love somebody. Yes. But what, what is it that you don't believe? That the other person can love me. Why not? You see, that, <laughs> yeah. then that's so the, what, yeah. then that is, the, it goes back to, yes. it means maybe I am not, I'm, I'm not lovable. Yes. Because if the number one person, yes. it, it was so easy for them to just up and go. Yes. Then, I mean, who, who, who's going to want me? Who's going to, you know? Definitely. You and it's not even a conscious thing, by the way. Like I'm saying in my book, I'm normally a very positive person. Yeah. Um, don't focus on the negatives. And yeah. So consciously, I don't have all those things. Yeah. But it is there, subconscious. And you see it in the decision yeah. that you make as a person that, okay, they are underlying... <laughs> It's amazing. It's actually the the way you you are you are, you are putting it. You know, so the the to, to unpack it a bit further. Actually, that's what happens. So, uh, what we assume is information for us is received through say language, mm. right? And but that only happens in, at a particular age when you are a bit older. When you're young, you've got other ways of receiving information. So we do know that actually the the way a pregnancy is. Mm. Um, the, the pregnancy, whether mom was depressed, mom was frustrated, how mom ate, that does have an impact on how you are born. Mm-hmm. And with children, we see by the time they are six months old, they already have the, the basic emotions. So they already, they are able to experience anger, sadness, joy, uh, surprise, disgust, fear. And, and 
you, it, so they, they are already wired to to experience those things and it's with time when you learn how to verbalize what you feel so then the adults in your life are the ones who explain mm -hmm. this is anger this is but you, you you are fully loaded fully prepared to feel everything that can happen to you mm -hmm. and so it's just like with loss uh, children who uh, like if if you lose a parent around the age say of seven when you are yeah. seven years old uh, You understand loss, but don't have necessarily the emotional capacity to to make sense of it. So it's yeah. very devastating mm. and so it is true that um, Children do experience are very painful emotions mm. but at that time they don't have the language to mm. but it's embodied mm. their body knows it mm. their primitive parts of the brain knows it and it's not maybe reached a level where they can rationalize intellectualize it but it's felt yeah. and feeling is 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 um that that's a language for everyone yeah, yeah you you don't have to understand anything but we under we all understand fear mm. if you if you met somebody from a different country and um they were afraid you'll you'll say mm. that is they don't have to use their language mm. or that is anger or that is and so it it is true that you know if if, if you say my mom left when i was 10 that already impacts a person and we normally say that um if it it's much better to actually experience let's say trauma or abandonment after the age of two mm. um but if or or, so the first two years of life are very mm. crucial in terms of Which what you experience. Mine, yeah, so it's ten months old. Yeah, so that sets a, it's like a foundation of a house. Yeah, if if that was traumatic and you build and you have a nice life afterwards, mm. it still affects a person. Yeah, versus if the foundation was good and you had some trauma afterwards. Mm. And so, and this is what we, we, we usually underestimate, not understanding what has happened to us. Nobody made sense of the story, what conclusions we've drawn, what scripts we are using to build mm. our life, you know? And so, so it's, it's that, and then, you know, and it has to do with love mm. and, and romance. And, you know, <laughs> you also got my attention when you said, all things end you know um <laughs> well, what do you think about that because i also have my own views about because that's what i write about mm. um i say so my chapter is about writing the story of your life mm. and somewhere i say that all stories have an ending they have a beginning they have a middle and end mm. but you can get to determine your ending yes, yes. and so so the, but you have an interesting way of thinking about endings. In. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My yeah. ending, then, yeah. <laughs> you can hear that it's not your natural, yeah, yeah. you know, like like someone getting married, yeah. uh, believing in forever. Yeah. Their ending is one of them dying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, to, but, to death. It, to exactly. Yes. So, but uh, mine, it's twisted. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine is like it, it can end you know any moment yeah you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, because it, it it ends i mean um the the first uh, marriage for example um, you know i'm talking about um, in here is that fun is that with him yeah I actually did believe that he loved me and that's mm. because we we had broken up quite a few times mm. and he would get him come back get involved with someone else and when I come back mm. that person is out mm. like out 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 because my person is, is back, back yeah. You know? yeah and I was like okay you know maybe this this, 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 this thing looks one. real eh? <laughs> yeah there's something there yes yeah and we we are okay we supporting each other we going through the most yeah. but but, you know, it's, I'm not even thinking that it, it will end because you remember this one, I believe, yeah. has got me. Because you've seen, you've, you've seen yes, through, yes, you know, behavior. <laughs> yeah. yeah, until one day, mm. poor thing just said the wrong thing and I was triggered. Yeah. And that's it. And he apologized and he apologized and but it I was triggered mm. and I, I was like, Yo, mm. even he's going to leave me. Mm. Yeah, so, so I, I better I better leave before better he leaves leave me. Before he leaves me, yes. Yeah. yeah. But you know you make me curious. I mean you don't have to 
answer this, but have you ever thought of therapy? Because it would be interesting to, to walk that, you know, um, yeah. if, if somebody did that with you, you know, that, that would have been lovely. No, maybe I actually should do it. It's just that, you know what? Hmm. The few times that I've gone to therapy, ne? yeah, I get there, I sit there, we have a chat, and they almost feel like oh, you've got it all figured out. It's okay, kind of a thing. <laughs> I st- I, yes, I, I, I don't feel like they. I don't know. I don't know whether it's the way I present the issues yeah. or yeah, they just listen to me and it's okay. And I do feel like sometimes I, I feel like I want someone to kind of challenge me to go beyond and whatever maybe i'll get to because the fact of the matter is that there are issues yeah yeah yeah. Um, (laughs) but we 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 typically say that um um, so in therapy it's the relationship that heals Mm. and so and by that we mean an authentic relationship with the therapist uh, because what we understand is that in, in society we don't really have re, re, uh, real relationships. Mm. We, well, they are real, but uh, many of them are, are built around what I can get, and you know. And uh, but a therapeutic relationship, so it's it's not every psychologist one gels with. I think you just need one that you you fit with. Yeah, you know, like some people yeah. you fit with some. Some are more gentle, some are more rough, some are a little bit more. They go in depth. Some are more. But I, I, because for me, I would listen to you. Um, I think um, even what you tell in the book, I think it would be to be lovely for, for to go on that particular journey. No, I agree. Yeah, and <clears throat> now that you um, have penned this down. Mm-hmm. Right? Do, do you talk? Do you do you tell people about you know what what the what you wrote about? Or uh, I'm interested in what people think about what you said. Yeah, look, I, <laughs> I, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, how do they typically respond? You know, um, you know, some people can relate. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, some yeah, they feel that oh, that's interesting. That is that's an interesting way of looking at things. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can relate to that. Oh, so maybe that's why even, and you know, when I talk to people, um, uh, I talk to them to say, it doesn't have to be your your reaction yes. might not necessarily be in in the romantic relationship. Yeah. It could be somewhere else. Yes. You know, it could be something else where you're doing something but you haven't uh, quite been able to put your finger on it. Mm. Why do I act this way? Yeah. Why do I do things this mm. way? You mm. know. So so I think people relate in that sense that oh so just just this thing of of saying Look here, mm. it might have is, happened to yes. me many moons ago, yeah. but it can still affect me today yeah. if I don't actually sit and think about it mm. and realize it for what it is. Yeah, it, it can be an issue. And I'm saying in here that the reason why I survived and kind mm. of looked like I, I, I had it all figured mm. out is because... because I, I look at it as a strong point, yeah. um, and, and the reason why I'm saying it's a st- strong point for me is because it worked for me. Because I'm yeah. thinking, if it wasn't that, probably maybe I would have been depressed. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been very capable of blocking things, mm. you know. Like yeah. I just put it in some department and yeah. you can compartmentalize no, it. No, <laughs> it sits there, and yeah. then I focus on other things. Yeah. It it's, it it works. But all I can say to people is that. That works, yes, but it has a way mm. of coming out. Of sneaking up on it you. It does sneak. It will sneak up on you. Yeah. For as long as you haven't dealt with it, yeah. it will sneak up on you. Yeah, we, we also say that you cannot not communicate. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, if there are things, you know, they either are going to come out through your mouth or they'll yeah. come out in different... Actions. But I, I actually like that you, you chose that topic because I think many of us have to think about those things because m- m- many of us are living it's like a program we are programmed but we've never actually thought about hang on why do i how why do i do this mm. and you know mm. um i'll give you an example you you find uh, i don't know uh, you know that story about um 
how people used to cook and cut chicken, the chicken legs. They said there was a couple that, that got married. I don't know the story. They, say, they mm. said there was a couple that got married when they got married. Yeah. And um, so one time the the husband is watching the wife cook. Mm. So she's, uh, I think they, 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 there was a chicken she cooked and then um, she cuts the legs um, and then she puts those away and then she cooks the chicken. The husband says, but why are you doing that? Like, but this is a waste. Mm. And then she says, um, no, but this is how my mother always did it. And then so they argue back and forth. He says, no, but this is how my mom always did it, so I'm doing it this way. And he says, but this is a waste. So they argue. One day they, they, they visited, um, they went for a visit to, to, to the mom's house, mm. um, the maternal mom, mom. And then so the, the, the son-in-law then asks, hey, you know, your daughter, mama, just please explain. You know when she cooks, she cuts the chicken. <laughs> And um, and then she she doesn't cook the, the other parts. I think yeah. she's wasting. Mm -hmm. and, and she says she learned it from you. And the mom says, Yeah. Um, well, um, yeah, that's what we did because the the pot I used to have was small, you know. Oh. And then so that's what she learned. But oh. when she learned that this is how yeah. it goes. You know, I think many things are like that in life. Mm -hmm. We we do things because they are. It's tradition. It's yeah. a construction. It's mm -hmm. a you know and. But we do benefit from reflecting. Yeah. Then what I want to ask you then is, uh, have you been surprised by either, I don't know if somebody has read, because I know some people have gotten the book already, either they've read your chapter, their response, or when you told them about what you wrote, what's up, if you've been surprised by, a, by their response? Mm, no. That maybe, um, okay, generally, well, the people closest to me yeah. have been vocal, so, it's so they, they are aware, they are you know. aware of. Mm. And those that uh, bought the book and have read it, good question, because I've actually been wondering that no one is giving feedback. Yeah, what still, do you think? Are they still traumatized <laughs> themselves? <laughs> have they read it? You know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, because, yeah, it, I don't know, some will probably find it really deep and they need more time to... Yeah, I, I, I think it's those kind of... Analyze it mm. and, yeah, because, like, remember, like I was saying that when people see you walking around and whatever, you know, like, you've got it all figured out mm. and they just can't, mm. what they will read here mm. and me, it's like... Really? Two different... Yeah. Like, ah, come on, is this really you? you yeah. Know? Um, okay, no, I'm very interested in how they respond to the mm. story. But the, I think um, there's a sense there that you are pointing to. Um, I think those kind of things make us, they make us reflect. Mm -hmm. And we do take time to mm -hmm. respond, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy that you've, we've got this in the book. And, you know, there's, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, and and the the questions with the experts, um, do you think um, are they clearer? Do you still wonder? You you have actually just unpacked. I had suspected that yeah. that was the case. Yeah, and I am happy that you've said it because it makes sense. I've always thought that it's probably more the, there's something there yes. for someone who's much younger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for the mere fact that you can't even discuss it with anyone, mm. you know, mm. yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, different stages, I mean, you mentioned the, 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 the trauma of a loss of someone around seven and whatever, the other one I'm talking about in here, mm. it's the loss of my sister, I was 10 there, mm. but you remember you said, there is a certain age where you you still can't quite comprehend mm. the, that kind of a loss and I can relate to that as well because yeah. um, yes I understood what someone dying meant because it just meant that I will never see them again but I remember it, it, it was weird it was very awkward because 
I can't even explain because if I say it, someone just thinks that I'm just saying it. But mm. I remember thinking that it means I am also going to die. Yes, yeah. so I literally thought we coexisted. Yeah, I didn't think that it ca- I can be and and she, she's not. And so I, I was sitting there thinking, like, what's going to like literally? Yeah, like, so what's going to happen now? Yeah, yeah, that age where you. You you know there is death, but you don't quite understand it for mm. for what it is, you know, and and then in those years, I think what was worse is that you know the old people in those days they never they come, really engaged. They the come young and whisper. Ones. They whisper in yeah. your ear. Yeah. Like you actually feel feel like it would be bad to talk about it. Mm. I'm, I'm, I've I've written here, and it's not a joke. I'm very serious that I I eavesdropped. On on, Com- on, conversation. on on the fact that my sister died, mm. ran to the back of the house, cried and cried and cried. Mm. And at some point, they called me. I wiped myself out quickly. Mm. At that point, you know what I'm thinking? Mm. They're going to say you were listening at adults' conversations. Mm. That's that's that was. That's my what worry. you worried about, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, in that context of in that of context, loss. I've just suffered a loss, but I'm worried about how oh, they going to be saying were you listening to mm. so you don't I've never discussed no one ever discussed yeah. the, first of all they also d- didn't see the need for me to attend the funeral mm. I remember sitting we stayed next to a mountain so I was sitting at a mountain I could you know oversee mm. the, the process and whatever I remember thinking I wonder if all those people that are there loved her the way that mm. I did you mm. know but they are there and I, mm. I don't get to be there yeah you know they had a weird way of doing things no profound questions you're asking you know you, you know talking to you um because you're taking me places you know <laughs> the things you are talking about are things that, that actually i reflect on a lot mm. uh, what i'm currently working on you know i've got a project i'm working on grief and loss right mm. and um so there's a there's a section on children um that i you know with children and grief and it's actually perfectly normal for it, it, when somebody does um die children do feel they might follow even when we mm. say things like god took the person mm. um the person is sleeping um so that confuses children mm. where you have to be very clear about what happened mm. and you have to talk to them because they do understand they've seen leaves die pets die mm. and so you have to talk to the child but what's also misunderstood about when children lose is that very often their world is their life is shifted around you find you have to move somewhere you have to stay with someone else mm. and um, if this person was very close to you now it, it changes mm. and so we, we understand we misunderstand the grief of children they start acting out in school we say they are being and this child is naughty mm. but you find that the child is is depressed and so we don't really deal with children and loss properly where we're supposed to tell them use the right words um not you know in the, the right words appropriate words and an appropriate time and space the appropriate person must talk to the child and and help ch- the child actually understand what's going on you know what is death mm-hmm. what happens when we bury people where do they go depending yeah. on what the family believes and things like that mm-hmm. those things are ch- children are very uh, you have to be like concrete, actually, um, not not metaphors mm-hmm. and things that don't make sense. So then they exactly. struggle afterwards. So yeah. it, for me, it makes perfect yeah. sense what you are very important. What you are too. saying, mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. no, wonderful. I, I, yeah. I mean, the, the the themes that you touch on, what you reflect on. I mean, these these are very important things that we we need to think about. Then you know, what are your hopes going forward? Um, what are you hoping for? When I was talking to the other co- co-authors, I said, hey, besides more sales, <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you hoping for with the book or just with your life? Yeah. Okay. Um, with the book and, and yeah, sales aside, because mm. we can't lie, we do want to sell. Uh, yes, but yes. other than that, ne, I, I always say that I think for me, this has got to be the 
the easiest, easiest book to sell. Mm. And it's because how often do you pick up one book yeah. and in that book, mm. whatever it is that you've got issues with, mm. as far as life, life is concerned, you will find a chapter mm. talking to you about it. Mm. And, and and I always say to people, no, no, don't worry. It doesn't mean you must have boxes of tissues all the time. There mm. are lighter issues as yeah, well. Travel, I mean, travel if you like traveling. Mm. But uh, this this book, this mm. book is wonderful. Mm. And we are all hoping, and, and that's the, the common message I'm yeah. hearing from all the co-authors. The whole idea was that, you know what? I want to be able to touch somebody. Yeah with what I've written in here. Um, uh, the, new girl, the, the other day when I met her, she was like, you know what, ne? the way that I poured my heart out. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's I'm even scary. scary. It's like it's, I've it's like our, exactly, my, myself. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm just hoping then the people will interpret that as a way of giving, you know, because it is that we have literally, you know, undressed ourselves. Yeah. Like I was saying, people look, we, we could have been just fine walking mm. around looking like, you know, we've yeah. got it all. We didn't have to mm. go and, and pour ourselves out like mm. uh, like that, but we did because we're hoping uh, people will, mm. will benefit from it. Mm. And for, yeah. for me, then, just to close out on my chapter, it, to say that it... it I continue to, to even as I'm talking to you mm. today for example, you mm. don't have an idea but you have clarified things mm. that I've always had questions about and I'm hoping that you know, I will be and, 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 and I think I am because mm. right now for example the relationship that I am in mm. it's different mm. you know, I, I can, even I can see mm. I have, first of all I've been able to open up and yeah. be vulnerable mm. because that's another thing when you are me mm. you do not open up mm. you remember you always got it and yeah. whatever and when you are got it mm. you don't enjoy the, mm. the relationship because mm. I mean even the other person can probably pick up that you know they feel it they, they feel something yeah, yeah this person you mm. know there are doubts all the time but you know those things are now gone I'm comfortable in my skin now mm. we you know mm. so in a way the process of reflection, uh, uh, I think that is a message I could send to mm. everyone that the pro, pro, process of reflection is very helpful yeah. um, and it's needed because mm. I've been through that of mm. blocking, mm. It, it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, no, it's, yeah. be, it's beautiful because healing, um, you know, it's, it's an integration of the things you've been through because that's what trauma does right it, mm. it splits us mm. and we live different lives you know and um so when we start healing we're bringing all those splintered parts together and and i'm happy that you brought this thing up in the book and then actually what you're saying now this reflecting thing mm. uh, because that that's how we we understand and when you understand you know we have we, then we, we operate differently. We, we, we approach things differently. Yeah. But I mean, this has been lovely. Um, I'm quite excited. I'm quite excited ab about the book, but also the things we are talking about because they are very close to my heart. Because it's what we deal with when people um, are struggling. But I'm, I'm happy and I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the launch. Yes. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me. Um, this is this is great, you know. Yeah, just as one keeps talking, yeah. you know, it's the process helpful all the time. So thanks.